Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today, continuing on with the latest round, pun intended, of Scott Atkins reviews that was sent in by JCVD Fan for Life. Uh, and today we are going to be talking about Eliminators, which um, well, you guys know me at this point. I go into everything with zero expectations. That way, if it does suck, I am let down. But this time it was different because I was a little worried because um, this was a WWE production and it does have one of the wrestlers in it. And I'm sure you guys know it at this point, you know, as, as well as I do or, or just as much as I do, that these movies uh, are particularly not on the better side. With There are exceptions. Um, but this one was actually okay. I did not mind this movie. I, I thought it was a decent little movie. You know, I thought it was, it was, you know, good for what it was. And the wrestler that's in it was not bad. So, hey, sometimes you can be proven wrong, which is nice. But yeah, I thought this was a decent little movie. Um, not perfect. There are some things I will, I will cover here that I, that I did not like, but yeah, I mean, it's a decent enough Scott Atkins movie, at least in my opinion. I mean, is this one that I would watch over and over and over again? No, but is this one that I would watch every once in a while, pick it up if I found it cheap on Blu-ray? Yeah, sure. Why not? There you go. That's it for the review. Thank you. See, no, I'm kidding. You guys know that. But before we jump into the rest of this, as always... If anyone else would like to send in a paid request, you may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be just a movie review. It could be a TV series, cartoon, comic book, video game, music, random thoughts, ranch streams, commentaries, and anything in between. That's what the paid request is there for. So again... If anyone is interested, go ahead, send it in. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. For those of you that have sent them in before, thank you. Greatly appreciate it. means you guys actually care about what I say and do on this Here Here channel. And you guys want to see me try some different things. It does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos. So it's a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the type of videos that you want to see me cover here on the channel. I keep making them, and at the end of the day, everybody goes home happy, just like they used to say at Blockbuster. So, thank you. But, Eliminator. So, before I go into into more of the film, yeah, WWE, uh, as, well, they're, they're currently in the news uh, for a couple of few things, but when it comes to their movies, um, most of them are not good. There are exceptions to the rules. The first couple... Movies that The Rock did, they co-produced. Uh, Scorpion, I do like Scorpion King. Uh, they they co-produced The Rundown and Walking Tall, which I liked. And then he separated himself. He went off on his on his own. But I did like those. The Condemned is okay. I could have sworn, I could have sworn that I did a review for that, but I don't think that I did uh, for a paid request. I don't think so, but I, a part of me says that I did, but I don't think that I did. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, it's okay. Oh, excuse me. I like Stone Cold in it. I like some of the things in it. Um, all the John Cena movies that, that they did suck, even though I have... Uh, I, the, the only good thing about the Marine was Robert Patrick was the bad guy. He's actually quite fun in that movie. 12 Rounds was okay, but it was just a rip-off of Die Hard with a Vengeance, and it was directed by the guy that did Die Hard 2. A couple of those Triple H movies I didn't mind, like um, The Chaperone and what the hell was the other one? I think it was called Inside Out or Close, something like that. That that was okay. The one with Edge, I think it was called Bending the Rules. That was actually surprisingly decent, but the rest of them have sucked. I mean, we did not need sequels to Behind Enemy Lines. We did not need, you know, 17 Marine movies and all that. So most of their movies are garbage. And 
I've heard in different interviews and such, the wrestlers hate them because they like for, they use they used to force the the wrestlers to like audition for them and watch them and they and I've heard several and watched several interviews and stuff and they all said they hated it. They didn't want to do it. Of course, it was the company trying to do different things and yeah, they just it, it was not a not a good thing. And he goes, "Yeah, I mean the the pay was nice if you ended up doing one. It was it was an extra paycheck. It was more money, but they said most of it, most of the time, it was stupid, and they hated watching them because they make a watch of it shit. Anyway, but this one is actually pretty decent. Now maybe it's because the one of the wrestlers is not the lead in it. I mean, uh, the, the wrestler that's in it is Wade Barrett. I I know who he is. I don't know anything about him as a wrestler because I stopped watching wrestling. Before he was even on, I stopped. I think he was part of the the Nexus when they first started NXT, and that was around the time that I stopped watching. Um, I stopped watching wrestling in like 2010. Um, I couldn't tell you most of the stuff that's happened between now and then, apart from like Undertaker losing to Brock Lesnar and WrestleMania and what's going on now with the fucking Royal Rumble shit. Um, I'm so excited. I keep yawning. I apologize. But um, I couldn't tell you anything about wrestling in the past 14 years, to be honest. Because <laughs> I, I gave up in 2010. I had enough. Anyway. But maybe that's why the movie's not bad. is because the wrestler is not the focus. And, he, and Wade Barrett actually does a pretty decent job. I mean, he's the villain. One of the villains, that is. But he's not bad. I mean, he serves his purpose. He gets a couple fight scenes with Scott Atkins, which is nice. Obviously, he could handle the the action and, and the choreography and such, which was nice. So maybe they should kind of take notes off of this one and not make your wrestlers the lead in every single movie because, again, acting for wrestling and acting for a movie is two different things. Um so, I mean, a lot of it kind of does cross over, but when you're acting in a movie, it's different than when you're going out there and cutting a promo and trying to make what you're doing real, you know? Oh, oh God, I'm so sorry, folks. I know some people have nothing better to do than complain about me yawning, but oh, well. But the plot of the film is Scott Ack. Okay, this is kind of... Well, I'll cover that later, but Scott Atkins... I'll open with this. Plays an American federal agent. We'll leave it at that. Who's living in England. We'll leave it at that. And these guys break into his house. He fucks him up. Does what he has to do. He has a daughter. He saves his daughter. He ends up in the hospital. And his daughter ends up in child protective services. It makes the news. Her The, the girl's grandfather, who is this crime lord finds out about this and wants to go get her. So he hires uh, Wade Barrett, who's this assassin, to kill Scott Atkins and retrieve her so she can be the next you know, person in line to take over the family business. So Scott Atkins gets out of the hospital. You find out that he was a deep cover operative. He's living under an assumed name and everything, so he has to protect his identity and make sure that nothing happens to his daughter. So the rest of the movie is him trying to go save her and make sure that Wade Barrett doesn't kill him. And that way, everything is okay. And that's it. I mean, you've, you've seen this movie before. It's not the most original plot. It's not the most original idea in the world. Um, I will point out the negatives first. Uh, we'll do that. So the whole thing... Of Scott Adkins being an American federal agent who's living in England does not add up because there's a lot of half of the movie he has an American accent, the other half of the movie he doesn't, and he keeps saying words like mate and everything. So I don't know what happened there. I don't know why they couldn't have just made him a British secret agent or whatever. Like, I don't know if they, they, they thought of us oh, too much like James Bond. Fuck that. Who cares? Uh, it would have made more sense to just have him do that. And then his daughter, they hired an American actress to play his daughter 
So, yeah, it's it's weird how they did it. I wish they would have just made him, again, like a British spy or he was a special forces, British special forces or something because that would have made a lot more sense because, again, half of the movie he has the British accent, the his natural accent. The other half he tries to do an American accent. It doesn't really work because it's in and out and... They didn't really think that through. And I don't know if they just didn't give a shit or like, we got to make this believable or whatever, but I thought that was dumb. Huh, excuse me, I thought that was dumb. How they did that, they should have just left it the way that it should have been. Um, there is some CG in the film, which I was not a fan of. Like, there's... A parts where a lot of the gunfire is CG and the and the squibs are CG and it's like come on like I know that WWE was not looking for like Rambo but they could have at least spent a little more time on the practical effects and making it look as good as they could in that department I don't know why they couldn't spend the cash there or what have you but oh well but I will. I, those are my complaints with the film. Again, the biggest one is why didn't they just make him just like a British cop or you know special force? It's, it's like don't complicate it more than you already want to make it complicated. But oh well. One thing that was interesting, uh, you see pictures of the character's wife, Scott Atkins' character's wife in the beginning. It's actually his real life wife. I thought that was kind of cool. And the guy that plays Scott Atkins, uh, like, handler or whatever, he was in Legionnaire with Jean-Claude Van Damme. He was the Italian guy that just wanted to get out and go see his, his girlfriend, I thought. I'm like, he, this guy looks familiar, so I looked it up. And I'm like, that's cool. And then the guy that plays the villain, the grandfather, was in Highlander. He was one of Connor McLeod's uh, clansmen in the beginning of the movie. I'm like, oh, that's cool, too. So there's a couple familiar faces in here, which is nice. The action sequences are there. It's nothing special. You do get some hand-to-hand -hand stuff. You do get the martial arts stuff, and then you get some gunplay. There's a scene when Scott Atkins' character is in a, uh, a tram, and it's like going from one side of like a bridge to another, and he fights some guys in there. I thought that was cool. I like the two fights that he has with Wade Barrett. Again, at the end, when he gets killed, when Wade Barrett gets killed, there's there's like some CG manipulation that's like, come on. But the rest was fine. There's some nice little gunplay, especially at the end. You know, the action sequences are not bad at all. Um, this is here on YouTube for free if you guys want to check it out. Now, I, I this was a pain in the dick because it's under... They have it labeled weird, and I hate when people label movies like this. But, because it took me a while to find it, because I kept putting in, you know, uh, Eliminators, Scott Atkins, Eliminators 2016, and it wouldn't come up. And then I had to keep doing it a couple times until it eventually popped in there. But if you, if, if you type it in and refresh it, it'll come up. But the title of the video is Shocking Home Invasion father fights back and they do have the poster of the movie as the thumbnail i and i hate when they when people label their videos like like i get why they do it it's so they don't get a copyright claim but i mean at this point i don't think anyone's going to copy claim a movie like this oh well but um i i hate when when they do it that way because it's just so fucking stupid and goofy and, you know, how are you supposed to know what it is if, if the if the thumbnail was not the poster? You know what I'm saying? It's like, come on now. Uh, but yeah, it is here on YouTube for free. Again, is this a movie that I would watch over and over and over again? No, but I'd put it on in the background for a little bit of a time waster. You know, if I found it for a couple bucks on Blu-ray, yeah, I'd pick it up for the collection. Why not? Scott Atkins was good enough in it. The action sequences were good enough. Again, I don't mind... Wade Barrett, the the wrestler in it, he actually did a pretty decent job as far as I'm concerned. Um, so I can't complain. Yeah, there's some shitty CG in there. And the whole thing where they try to make Scott Atkins an American and, and you don't buy it and they, they try to have him talk with a, an American accent and it doesn't work. You know, it is 
that's the biggest complaints I have. Other than that, you know, it's a pretty decent directed video movie. It's nothing special. It serves its purpose. You all know the drill by now. So there you go. But anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of Eliminators. Next up, we are going to be taking a look at a movie that I'm constantly asked about that I still have not seen, but that's why I like doing this. Triple Threat, which also has Michael Jai White, Iko Uweas, and Tony Ja. So I will be finally giving that a look. Of course, I'm late to the party on this one like I am with everything else, but hey, it is what it is. But we'll be wrapping about that one next. So, And then we have uh, one more after that, which is one more shot. See what I did there? Uh, but yeah, we'll be taking a look at those two, starting to wind down on the latest round of Scott Atkins reviews, and we'll keep it rolling like we always do. Later. <laughs>